Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week, we're going to continue our look at Profile Manager, and we're going to get into the actual Profile Manager interface and start to take a look at uh, ways in which we can manage our users and our devices. Now, to get to Profile Manager, you would just click on this Profile Manager Open in Safari uh, button here. Uh, and then it will ask you to log in. Now I've already done that, so let me just uh, go ahead and pull up the web page here so you can see what it looks like. And so as you can see, this is Profile Manager. Now down the side here, we've got all of our uh, different library of things and activity. In the middle here, we have the actual items for the uh, particular area that you selected over here, and then the details over here on the side. And you can see we can manage by devices, device groups, users, groups, and then uh, we've got classes, apps, and books over here as well, as well as our different tasks that Profile Manager is completing. So let's take a look at some of the specifics here. Uh, we'll just use groups because uh, users looks the same, and we'll just take a look specifically here at some of these items on the side. Now you'll notice we've got this About tab here, and under this About tab we've got general information about this particular group, uh, the group name and where it's located. You can see it's on our local server. Then we've got some restrictions in here, and this, this allows us to set up what we want to have seen or not seen through Profile Manager. Now, if you remember in our previous screencast, we went to our My Devices area uh, to enroll our iOS and Mac devices. You notice that here I can actually uncheck that and not allow people to do that. Now, I may do that for the purposes of me wanting to uh, install their profiles myself or to send them profiles by email or whatever, but uh, I can choose to close that off and not have it op open. Now, if I want to have that open, I can restrict what the My Devices website looks like. I can choose to not allow uh, profile downloads, so they can only see it but not allow the downloads. And that, again, in the case that I want to install the profiles myself, and then when they go to the website, then all they'll have access to is the ability to wipe their machine or, or whatever. I can go ahead and uncheck that so no pro the Profiles tab doesn't show. I can also say Allow Device Enrollment and Unenrollment. Now I can check this box if I don't want them to enroll themselves or unenroll themselves. And so that, that keeps it so the certificate doesn't get taken off by your user. So this one's a really uh, valuable one here to use, especially if you've got maybe young users or somebody that you're trying to monitor what their uh, viewing is and what they can or can't see. If they start to understand they can take the profile off whenever they want, then that'll cause you some problems. So you can check this here so that, uh, uncheck this so that it allows them not to do that. I can say allow the device lock or not, allow the device passcode to be cleared, or allow device wipe. And so if I uncheck those, then on that My Devices screen, they wouldn't have the option to do those things like I showed you in a previous screencast. So again, it's nice. It gives us the ability to restrict certain things that can be used or not. Now, I've also got allow enrollment during setup for devices in the device enrollment program. And so again, if I uh, have a device enrollment program already set up. Uh, I can have people go through the setup assistant to enroll their device in my uh, program. And again, that's if I've got more of a, the, the corporate program where I've got the device enrollment stuff set up. I can allow enrollment during the, uh, for the setup assistant for devices configured with Apple Configurator. And Apple Configurator is just another application I can use to configure and enroll my devices. So I can allow that to show up in the setup assistant. Or I can just restrict the enrollment uh, to only placeholder devices. And what that means is that I can come over here and create a device uh, that I don't have enrolled yet, and it's called a placeholder. And then when someone goes to enroll, then it'll fill in all their information over here for the particular device. So I can restrict the enrollment to only those type of, of devices so that no one else can enroll in my program except those that I've already set up a, a pre-set up a profile for. And then, of course, I can say restricted to assigned devices and that sort of thing. Uh, again, there's a little arrow here. I can learn more about the restrictions if you want to go in depth on any of these. And then again, it'll show me what uh, what groups, uh, settings, apps, books, and stuff this particular uh, group is in. And you can see it's not in any groups. And then the OS built-in uh, security updates. Are there any updates available? And there are not. So that's the About area. And again, this is a really good area to set up your restrictions for what access looks like. I can come to the Settings area, and you can see I've got the Settings for Everyone profile that we've set up. And it shows all of the different um, uh, services that we have set up that users can automatically have enrolled if they just download this particular profile. So if you preferred not to have people go through the My Devices uh, 
portal, you could actually just download the certificate, email it to everybody, and then have them put it on their devices, and they can enroll with all of this different information that way, as opposed to getting it off of the Profile Manager uh, My Devices website. So again, just kind of a different way of being able to do that. I've got enrollment settings here as well. I have activation lock settings. Uh, do I want it to be by supervised devices to uh, lock their device or not? So if it's ones that I have supervised with kids or in a school or corporate environment, do I want them to be able to lock it themselves? Uh, or do I want them to lock it if they're supervised devices and those are the particular ones with kids, like I said, mostly in school? And then I can say set the device name, and that, that only works if I've got a supervised device. I can actually set the device name myself so no one else can do that. Okay, over here now we've got uh, three sections. We've got apps, we've got books, and we've got activity. Let me just show you. Apps and books work in conjunction with the apps and books over here in the sidebar. Now what this does is this allows me to install, if I just click over to apps, I can add uh, either apps that I've purchased through the volume purchasing program. So if I'm in a corporation or in a school, I can purchase uh, certain applications at a discount when I need multiple copies for multiple students or employees. Or I can actually add my own app. So if I had my enterprise uh, create an app, they could add it right through here. And then that would be available on that other screen for me to add to different users or to devices. Uh, same thing happens with books. I can have the volume purchasing program of books, or I can add an enterprise book. Uh, let me show you what this looks like. If I just add an enterprise book, it's going to drop down here, and I'm just going to put a user's manual, a real old one, a PDF. I'm going to say choose. And what it's going to do is it's going to upload this PDF. You can see that's a real old uh, getting started with server there at 10.6. And so it's going to upload this book, and once it's uploaded, There it is. Now that it's uploaded, it's showing here right in the sidebar as a book that I have available. And I can always get rid of the book or add the book right here. I could, this The apps would look the same way. Now if I go back to my groups here, and we go back into apps, I can hit the plus right here and uh, add a, an application if I wanted to, which again, I don't have any apps to add, but I wanted to show you what that looks like. Or books. And if I click the plus on books, you see there's the book that I added. And so I can actually select this particular book here and, and just by checking it and have this book say, OK, added to everyone. So everybody then uh, who has the profile set up for everyone is going to have this book installed and loaded on their iOS devices. And so once I hit Save, then it would go ahead and add that book. And you can see down here, I've got a couple other uh, options if I hit the gear. There's a whole bunch of things I can do. I'm going to show you this because this goes across all of your different devices, but I just want to show you this part first. And if I click this uh, button right here, it's just going to highlight this, uh, this area right here. You can see it's highlighting it or unhighlighting it. And that allows me then to actually delete the book from here if I want to so that it doesn't get pushed to everybody. Uh, but once I get hit save, it's going to push. So let's go ahead and delete it, and I'll show you what it looks like. Then it goes see back to nothing. And then over here we have activity, and this would be any activity uh, that was happening for this particular user. Uh, so if I was uh, adding things to the profile or whatever that need to be pushed to everybody, they get pushed through this interface. I'm just going to hit revert, so I don't have any problems there. Okay, so that's the groups area. Uh, again, we have device groups. I'll just show you that. I can add a device group if I want to just by clicking this. And so here's my device group. And let's just say I can call it, uh, you know, my devices, let's say. Let's just make it a generic group. And so there it is. It's all set up and ready to go. I'm just going to hit save that. And it's going to save the name here for me for my devices. There we go. And then I've got settings here for the devices. And you can see this is the, the setting for devices. You notice it has general without all the other stuff in there. And that's because this doesn't go per user but by device. And I've got some of these basic activation lock settings here as well. And then I've got apps and books just like before. And then I've got members here. And all I would do is hit the plus here and I can add devices. And I can add, let's say, this and this and say done. And there's my two devices added to my device group. And so now what I can do is I can actually manage the devices based on a group here. And so you can see here I've got activity there as well. And then once I click Save, then everything's set and ready to go. So that gives you an overview of the interface. Um, one more thing is activities. You can see I've got tasks here. It's going to push uh, a change that I've made to my devices. You can see it's pending the push to my iPhone right now. And then I've got completed tasks here. So I can see all the different push settings. And I can see, that, again, there's my enrollment of my iPhone and enrollment of my MacBook there right here inside this Profile Manager interface.
So that gives you an idea of how Profile Manager works in terms of an overview. What I'm going to do is go in depth on how you set up uh, various specific settings for each of your either devices or users and those settings getting pushed through the profile to their devices. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.